here we are asking Allah for cure, but there's a better way of asking. I said, oh Allah, grant me cure. But the better way is, oh owner of cure, grant me cure. Ya Shafi, Allahumma Shafi, Anta Shafi. Oh Allah, grant cure. You are the curer. You are the owner of cure. That's a better way. Why? Because I'm acknowledging that Allah is the owner. He is the one. Oh Allah, Ar-Razzaq. Oh Allah, the owner of sustenance, grant me sustenance. It's a better way of supplicating. So I'm just trying to show you that there's a way of doing things, but there's a better way. This is not wrong, but this is better. Learn the names, attributes of Allah, the qualities. What is it you're asking Allah? I'm asking him forgiveness. Oh, owner of forgiveness, grant me forgiveness. How's that? Ghafoor, Ghaffar, Tawab, all these are names connected to the forgiveness that Allah gives. Tawab, the one who oft forgives all the time, he accepts the repentance. Tawab, Ghaffar, one who forgives often, time and again, over and over again. Ghaffar. So the names and qualities of Allah are very, very important. When you want to ask for cure, you say you speak about a Shafi, the curer. Okay, that's amazing. Similarly, if you take a look at the supplications that are made in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, or in the Quran, a lot of the times you'll find beautiful names and qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, today we don't know the names and at times, even if we know them, we don't use them. I know of uh, children who memorize the 100 names of Allah, the 99 names of Allah, the 99 names of Allah, and there are more than 99. There are probably 120, 150. The exact number is not actually known, but the 99 that we know, the 99 that are specific, those that are mentioned in a specific hadith, those 99, the hadith says, if you memorize them, if you actually believe them, if you put them into practice in a certain way, then Allah will grant you paradise just because you've recognized your maker. That's the reason. You've recognized your maker. You've recognized who made you and whom you're going to return to. So to know the qualities of Allah is one thing, but use those names. Use them. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. Forgive me. Oh Allah, this is who you are. This is what you, you've promised. Oh, this, these are your qualities. You are the, the strongest. Grant me strength. Oh Allah, you are the protector. Protect me. You are the giver. Give me. And so on. So getting back to this dua. Habli mulkan la yambaghi li ahadim min ba'di. Sulaiman alayhi salam says, Grant me kingdom ownership of that which you won't give someone after me. He says, Innaka antal wahhab. He uses the term Wahhab, the name Wahhab. You are indeed the giver. Wahhab is one who gives gifts. The one who gives gifts, Al-Wahhab. So Sulaiman alayhi salam, when he did that, three things I'm only going to say. Number one is he sought the forgiveness of Allah. Number two is he asked Allah. And number three is he's mentioning the names of Allah that are connected to what he's asking, Allah says, we gave him. Immediately the next verse, you know what Allah says? فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الْرِيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ We made the winds under his power. The wind that was blowing, we gave him authority over the wind. Allahu Akbar. Imagine the wind blowing and you're looking and you're saying, a bit more. And suddenly it's blowing more. People think you're crazy, right? You say, for example, Calm down, slow down. You know, blow the clouds to that area. And this thing is going there. People think, what's going on here, man? It happened to Sulaiman alayhi salam. Allah gave him the, the ability. Allah gave him the ability to control certain things to a certain degree. And one of them was the wind, the clouds. He could speak to the animals and the birds and the insects. The point being raised is, he says, Rabbi that's, that's the powerful part of it. Oh Allah, forgive me. He's a prophet of Allah. He's a king. Some prophets were actually kings. He was a prophet and a king. And so he's seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Rabbi Ghfirli. And grant me this tonight, I want to tell you. Every one of us has needs. Start off by seeking the forgiveness of Allah. The idea is to get onto one page. Someone wants something from you. What do they need to do to you? They need to at least get to you, greet you, smile at you, you know, uh, at least be in good books, right? You say, my brother, 
can you please do me a favor? Hey, a smile has melted the guy. Before you even ask him the favor, he says, anything, ask me, done. Consider it done. Before you ask him, right? Because of how you are, right? Agreed. But if you've had a bad relationship with someone and you've been right on the other side of the, the, you know, the coin completely and you're saying, do me a favor, I need this, I need that. They say, for what? They wouldn't even look in your direction. You wouldn't even feel comfortable asking them. So Allah's example is far higher than that, far greater. Allah is merciful. He's kind. He knows you. He knows your struggles. He knows your uniqueness. He knows your trials. Sometimes a person appears to be very, very close to Allah. They have struggles. Their struggles are hidden from others. They know what they are working on in terms of eradicating their bad habits. A dark habit you may have. It happens. We are human beings. You may have something, if it were to be exposed to the masses, you would probably be embarrassed. If it were to be exposed to your own spouse, you might be embarrassed. So it's between you and Allah. Allah knows it. You know it. Work on it. Work on it. You can do better. You will do better. You shall do better. Because there are so many other things that you need from the same Allah whom you're transgressing against. One of the most important things is Jannah. I need paradise. How do I get it? Well, look on earth. There's so many distractions. Allah didn't say you won't be distracted. He says that there are distractions. They will be powerful. Abstain, stay away. Wherever you've fallen, come back quickly. That's what happened to Adam alayhi salam. Wherever he fell, he came back. But there was one major fall. That's it. After that, he realized, he recognized the devil as well. He said, you know what? Shaitan's going to come to me and make me go far away from the one I need the most. So Allah Almighty has given us revelation to remind us and to tell us. You turn to Allah.